my name is Karen Arwal, and I'm running for the marketing director. My name is Jason, and I'm running for the marketing director as well. Hi, my name is Bruce, I'm running for social events director. Hi, my name is Sayed, I'm running for social events. My name is Hamza, I'm running for social events as well. I'm Azrael Bering, and I'm running for social events director. I'm Zeta, I'm running for secretary. My name is Michael, I'm running for secretary. My name is Nina, I'm running for alumni director. My name is Hermjo, and I'm running for the alumni director. My name is Aiden, and I'm running for the competitions director. Okay, thank you all um, for introducing yourselves there. Now uh, we'll just go back this way, uh, starting with the first question. Um, Aiden, why are you interested in joining the CLSA? Yeah, so when I first applied to Bond, I was really excited to see that there was a Canadian Law Students Association. And I just want to continue um, the legacy that's been set by the Canadian Law Students Association, making a good community for all Canadians on the way here and just being a friendly place. Yep. Um, the reason why I want to join the CLSA is because I look up to the people who are currently in the CLSA and I hope to follow your footsteps, uh, footsteps as well. I would like to be part of CLSA because CLSA looks to foster growth and change in a community, especially Canadians, and I think that I would be able to do that. I wanted to be part of CLSA because there was a tight community of Canadian law students I wanted to be part of that. Personally, when I first came here, I felt uh, more welcome to Bond University as a, as a whole because of CLSA and because of the inclusive events they were able to provide, and I was able to be a part of those luckily, so I just like that. Other people experience the same experience as well. Yeah, I think we need a balance between school life and student life. And I think as me running for social events, I kind of want to provide more opportunities for things to do outside of school. So it's not just school life. Like, if you guys vote for me, then I'll try to see if we can get more events that kind of take away from the pressure of school. So I just want to say the same, exactly the same thing you said. Yeah, I just want to get do more events. I just want to enhance my law school experience, which is why I'm joining the CLSA. I want to join the CLSA because, as Hamza mentioned, when I first started here, the CLSA was very welcoming and coming, and I would like to give back to the future and current students. And I want to be part of something, and I really like what the CLSA does, and I hope to contribute my um, expertise in it. Second question, general question. Um, have you ever been a part of a group or association like this, and what was your experience from that? When I was back in Canada, I, was, I went to Catalina University for my Bachelor of Legal Studies, and I was part of the Catalina Legal Association, doing our events and social planning. So I am used to balancing academia and social events as well, and it's very similar to the CLSA, just at home. Um, I have not been in a club setting before, but I am very adapt to having a full plate, and I'm a very organized individual, so I don't think that I would have any issue with having changes in my school, because in my bachelor's degree, I did work full time as a legal assistant, and um, in my bachelor's full time as well, so I think I'd be able to manage both things, and I'm interested in learning what a club has to offer and the experiences I can learn from it. Back in my undergrad, go to PD. I was part of the PD association under the accounting department and used to help uh, organize events, so which is what I want to do here again. Uh, in my undergrad, I did uh, a group in Concordia 
I did this like kind of similar to CLSA. I don't know if you guys know, but uh, I was actually a manager at Best Buy, so uh, I do have that experience of like running these type of events, and I do have like that experience of having like 30, 40 people that you know like are in my department. So I kind of have the experience to be able to kind of deal with all different types of people, ages, all that stuff. So yeah. I've never been part of any clubs such as the CLSA before, but my, my experience on like sports teams and stuff like that helps me understand what it's like to work in a collaborative team building environment where you're pushing for the uh, benefit of the, the group and everybody should benefit from that situation. So I think I have a good understanding in that regard. I haven't been part of any clubs like this, but I've been part of sports teams such as Hamza, and like I learned how to communicate <coughs> the leadership role that it takes. Um, when I was at Western, I was part of a club that promoted women in leadership. I was an executive member of that club, so I'm pretty used to balancing my academics as well as my outside extracurricular work. So I think. So here at Bond, actually. I was involved in Core 2, which is a mandatory class for all of the LLB students. It's a course in teamwork, and one of the roles that we were assigned for a task was to work in groups of four. It's a small team like the CLSA, I know the CLSA is almost on the side, but it shows that in a position where there's a small team, you need to have somebody that's a leader and able to kind of suffice with all of the members, find their roles, what they're looking for, what they want to do, but as well as what they're beneficial at, which might be different. Uh, so with that, I was also the class representative, and I used that role to actually get feedback and draw from the class, where in oftentimes classes, it's something that's limited and sparse. So I can bring that same energy here to the CLSA. With my work experience studying at a, at a young age, job 14, I've always managed to go, to go to school from 9 to 4 and then have a part-time job from like 4.30 to 9 or whatever my hours would be. And then when I, as I got older, I started working as a, as a legal assistant at many different kind of law firms, and I was still pursuing a paralegal diploma. As I excelled in my career, I joined a lawyer and we opened up a law firm in back in Edmonton, Alberta. And I was, at the time, working two part-time jobs and I was helping the lawyer that I worked with open up this office and we hired some staff. I, I was able to organize the office, get it all set up as a law society would need, and while I was working two part-time jobs. So I always had time for my uh, main job and my two part-time jobs, and I just was able to put in my heart and mind what I really wanted, and this position would be that. Um, I had a job back in my undergrad, and I was able to, um, you know, not have like, that work like balance as well. I know what my priorities are, and because of that, I was able to like manage my time as well, get good grades, and still go away. Yeah, back in Edmonton, I worked at a few university with their athletics department, so I was uh, involved in a lot of the competition stuff they were setting up and the different tournaments, kind of the less stuff. So, yeah, I think the experience from that uh, will translate well into this position. Thank you. Now the last general question that we have for you all is just what skills or strength do you possess uh, that you can bring to the club and will be beneficial for the club? Um, we will take probably your top two or three um, best skills that you think you can bring. <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, I'm very uh, approachable. I think I can uh, be very inclusive to the group. Um, along with that, just with my past answer, I was working in a similar role like this with competitions. I think that that skill of, uh, or the strength of kind of having experience before will uh, blend well, and then I think I'm just, uh, I have good time management when it comes to things like this. So I think I'll be very proactive in making sure that competitions are set up well in advance to avoid any hiccups down the road. I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate about what I do, and I always give my passion to like everything I can do. Um, and um, I'm a very positive person, and I'm very social, and I foster like many relationships with many people throughout the law program. Um, my two strongest skills, would, I would say, would be I'm a very friendly person, and I, and I love to make new friends and help out people. And also, I have this uh, this strength to always do better. If I always want to better myself, I would always want to better the club as well and contribute to the success of the club. So I have two skills I can comment upon. The first is organization, which is rather intuitive in the secretary role. The second is work ethic. So the first is satisfied by simply being a law student. You need to keep track of files in the organization. 
I've utilized things like Excel, and I participate in a competition after this semester where I believe that I have one of the most substantial word trees. And that was accomplished in a rather short time. I spent nearly a day on each of them and made it to the finals. Uh, the second component is my work ethic. And I'm never satisfied just meeting the bare minimum. I over tried to overperform, and hopefully that will be evidence in my performance here. Thank you. I think two skills that I can bring to the LSA are both my communication skills and my interpersonal skills. I think fostering healthy communication and open channels of communication between the team will be really helpful. And then as well as interpersonal skills stories kind of I rely on those when I'm talking to you guys and what your guys' needs and wants are, and I can bring that to the team as well. The two skills I bring is a creative mindset, which I can add to the social events and stuff, and I'm um, really good at time management. I'd say that I have a pretty good work ethic, um, and also I'm a pretty social and interactive person, and I feel like I'm pretty approachable, and I think that's important. I want to make sure that all the voices of my peers uh, and community law students are heard, especially when it comes to finding social events. Uh, I'm trustworthy and I'm also very hardworking. So uh, if I say I'm going to do something, I'll make sure to get it done. Uh, mine's communication. I love meeting new people, talking to new people, and managing my time properly. Mine is communication because I'm good at communicating and I'm approachable, and time management because I can balance work, school, and CLSA with mental health. My skills are strengths that I believe that will help me benefit this club is I'm highly motivated, I'm a pretty individual, and I also have a strong communication um, skill that allows me to effectively work with diverse personalities, so I can ensure everyone feels welcome. I would say my two skills or strengths for this role would be my time management and organization, which I think are very important when you're planning events and organizing with multiple different um, faculties like or, and people like professors and the MCA. And if you're so I believe that those two would be my best Okay, thank you everyone for the, the general feedback. Um, we will now start tailoring questions. So I'll we'll pass it off to your Martin, so Justin and Kieran. Uh, why do you guys think you'd be a good fit for the role? And Kieran, you can start. Thank you. Akshay, I think I'd be a great fit for the role because I'm highly motivated and I'm a creative individual and I believe that my experience will help be able to foster what the CLSA would like to project in, through the social media. And I'm adept at using social media. I'm able to use platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and I'm also good at uh, with web pages. And I think that those skills will help benefit me and make me an ideal candidate for the role. Um, why do I think? Because with my background in business, so I've done marketing courses and I've learned how to use different softwares and platforms as well. I'm very committed, I'm good at deadlines as well. I'm very committed, I'm good at deadlines, and I'm good at teamwork as well, so which is why I believe I'm good for this role. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned uh, you're good at meeting deadlines. Can you guys describe a time where you have to meet a, a tight deadline to get multiple tasks finished? Because marketing's gonna be kind of a heavy duty for, for next semester. Yeah, so I'll go back to when I was in my bachelor's degree. Um, I worked full time as a legal assistant and I also was pursuing my bachelor's and there was a time where our law firm had gone through a um, major case because I worked in family law so we worked with MCFD which is the Child Protective Services in BC and we had a huge case where we had a lot of paperwork that needs to be reorganized and put onto the computer and it also had my midterms going on at the same time so as an individual I'm very organized and I have a planner where I'm able to jot down and prioritize what is more important to get those jobs done and I'm the kind of person that doesn't rest or go to sleep until I get my jobs done um, because I prioritize my work before anything else. I really like to work under pressure. It's when it comes out so it works better when I'm under pressure. So in my law clinic right now, so my uh, lawyer, they would give me assignments and he gave me a deadline of three hours to read a couple cases and relate it back to the facts that you provided which I balanced with my school time and my work time. So that was one of the times I felt really pressured to excel and I was done as fast as I could, which is what I believe in this role, I could meet the deadlines that you were mentioning about Shane, how heavy it is, which is why in the deadlines, I could work under pressure and get it all done. Okay, sweet. And uh, my last question for you guys, do you have any experience in using Canva or any other marketing tools like Photoshop? Um, 
Um, yeah, so I do have experience using Canva. It's a great app that allows you to create professional designs. I've used it in my bachelor's degree. I've used it with like, creating my resume and also with my family business as well. And I do have experience with, um, I would say I have Adobe Pro, so I don't know if that's Photoshop, but I do edit documents, I'm really good at that. Um, but yeah, I do have experience using apps for marketing. Uh, I'm very good at Photoshop because I use it with my dad's company. I make designs for him. I help him promote his advertising. So that's the only, I can use Canva, but I'm eager to learn about it and it would be easy to adapt with it. Okay. So I lied. There's one more question for you guys. Um, what do you think sets you guys apart from, uh, I guess, each other for this position? Well, I don't know Justin too well, but I know that I am a highly motivated individual that has experience. Like, I don't have the marketing experience that Justin may have with his business degree, but I believe my personal life experience and him being a girl and being able to investigate into me, you know, using social media, um, I know how to navigate through it. So I believe that, that those experiences and personal experiences allowed me to be a better candidate for this role. I don't personally know Kieran as well, but I don't have the Canva experience like she does, but I'm always eager to learn. I like to learn new things. Uh, with my personal experiences, I believe it could give me a little jump ahead of Kieran, but otherwise, Kieran summed it all up. With my personal and current experiences, I can help be a better person. Awesome. All right, so that's all I had to ask. <laughs> Perfect. We'll move on to the um, positions for social events. Musa, why do you think you'd be a good fit for this position? The reason why is because of like I mentioned earlier, I'm very social, like being with people, I like to get people involved, doing new, new events, and moving out of this time. I'm going to quote Mr. Jay Z, Mr. Jay Z said, I'm going to quote Mr. Jay Merchant here, for the people, by the people, and uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm all, okay, joking aside, I really think I can make a difference in terms of just like, being able to provide more kind of events. Like I feel like we had what, St. Patty's Day? And then before that, right? We need more people. We need uh, food, we need uh, like game night, movie night, just a lot of different things. Um, so yeah, just more events, kind of as I said earlier, kind of separate that school from the student life. And just, uh, yeah. Um, as everybody kind of touched on, I think I'm a pretty social person, but I think with a position like this, you need to be good at bringing people together and making people feel comfortable with one another. I think I'd be able to do that with how approachable I am, how social I am. Um, and I'd like to create an environment where people don't just feel like they have access to a parade with through a social event, but they're also able to feel comfortable and welcome to that event and have a good time. Uh, I'm, a social I'm a social person also. I believe that, like, uh, what sets me apart. Uh, I believe that <laughs> from the other. I'm a good fit for this position because I can take great feedback from other people, and I believe I'm very approachable from others, and uh, I can add that to that feedback. You can add to social events. Thank you. Can you describe a time when you had to resolve an issue in a group project or organizing an event? Uh, one time, uh, we had a, a group project back in high school, and uh, the project, everybody had different sets of ideas and stuff, and I told them that everybody should list their best ideas and we keep together, and we decided from each person's list that we could come together and we ended up with Perfect, thank you. Um, Hamza, can you describe a time when you have to resolve an issue? Um, one time when I was on a hockey team, uh, there was a dispute between team members, and uh, it was pretty serious, and it definitely affected our family ice, and it needed to be resolved, and we eventually got them together, and we were able to cooperate and properly resolve the issue between the two parties, because I think miscommunication is a big thing when it comes to when people desire or want something, and they feel that there's somebody else that is antagonizing them. So just doing, fostering that environment to have more thing. Yeah, so like, uh, going back to my uh, Best Buy days, you know, being a manager, being able to kind of determine when people go on breaks and stuff. Like imagine Boxing Day, 14 hours, 15 hours working, people are ang angry, well not angry, but like tired, stressed out, trying to like calm staff, trying to determine like when to have the right time of like, you know, just the events to do like for Christmas, um, Halloween, all that stuff, so. 
I have more questions. That's it. Whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Musa, how would you collaborate with other club members and students on campus to enhance the success of social events? Sorry, <coughs> how would you collaborate with other club members and students on campus to enhance the success of social events? Um, I would probably uh, get other clubs like the uh, you know, SS or whatever uh, to come join uh, join like our friends, not just Canadians, like other students too, like Australians, Asians, and so on. Sorry, what was the question? How would you collaborate with other club members and students on campus to enhance the success of social events? Hmm. Um, good question. I think, yeah, just asking them if they would, like, let's just collaborate. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with just like working together uh, to achieve a single goal. Um, the biggest thing is people are just afraid to ask. So if you just ask, people are usually nice. So, you know. Just to get a reoccurring theme for the communicator and be inviting and approachable is a big thing. Making sure that like my club members are heard as well and their opinions are heard and we all work as a team in unison because then you can reach a common goal together. And as well as the members outside of the club, it's possible. It's a big factor. They feel like they're welcome and it's not always a useless thing. Um, so they feel welcomed and a part of the community as well. As, and they have a community that represents them instead of uh, it's like a popular thing or a club. I believe like if you talk to them, I'll get their feedback and everything. And um, there's no bad ideas, you know? So you, you don't know it is. Yeah, simple. <laughs> okay, um, last question for real. What do you think sets you apart from other applicants in this position? So where you can start? I believe every applicant here is capable, but the reason I'm set apart is that my previous work experience, time, like, from work and school and everything, time management, I believe that's set to be Yeah, I think uh, a big thing that sets me apart is my ability to balance uh, my schedule and make sure that I have time for the things that, I, that I'm committed to, and if I'm committed to something, that's, that's it. I want to say my experience, um, I'm fifth sem. I'm also, I think, probably the oldest one on this panel, so uh, I think, yeah, just my experience. Same here, just my experience. <laughs> All right, so uh, these next set of questions are for you guys who are running for secretary. So first things first, uh, why do you guys think you'd be a good fit for the role? And Michael, I'll let you start. I'd be a good fit for this role because I actually want to be the treasurer. And I can only do that if I'm familiar with all aspects of the CLSA. I mean, there's talks about how to make the events better. And none of the answers necessarily talk about how to go about other uh, societies to join. And one of them would be to approach their marketing departments. I mean, we have our own, and what I noticed is even with the LSA, there wasn't necessarily a good brand advertisement of the St. Catherine Day event, or even for turnouts for the hockey arbitration. So I'm somewhat aware of these issues, and I can point them out once I'm aware of those. I can point what the goals of the CLSA are. Like one of the most important events is Lord Jennings, and a big issue where that would probably be relevant is funding. And all the other events are towards funding, and some of them obviously draw from it to at least engage students throughout the semester. But it's necessary to take a step back and assess the situations we're going to roll with that. I understand it's an internal application. It's not something necessarily all these students would apply for or vote on. I think that I would be a good fit for this position because rather than focusing on moving up in CLSA at the moment, I'm more focused on this role specifically. And um, kind of my organization skills and communication skills are both things that I can utilize to focus on this role and do the best I can at it. Could you uh, talk about some tools or strategies that you use to stay organized? Yeah, tools and strategies I use to stay organized can include just personally, like. Getting, writing everything down, like I said, fostering that healthy communication between my team members, and then obviously like Microsoft Word, and then things on my computer that kind of help me stay on task. So in terms of like visual and organization, I've been part of the Bomb Law Clinic. It's actually my second semester. I was voted best volunteer as of uh, last semester. And essentially what we have to do is take file notes that are concise and clear, because it's not just me who's relying on 
these other people, especially if I were to relate to CLSA, it's the CLSA members and then maybe some administrative staff at the university. Another thing is taking note of time frames and the importance of how time is spent, which is something I have done and continue to do. Thank you. So a lot of the stuff that you're gonna to have to be doing as secretary is helping sort of other directors out. Um, can you guys describe a time when you have to go outside of your role to assist others on the team? So I can start with that again. Uh, with the core two class I was just talking about earlier, uh, there was rather hesitation by certain members to perform certain tasks or in proficiencies at the time. So reorganizing and taking on the leadership role, even though it's onerous, it's for the purpose of getting a good mark and delivering a, a well performance. So I managed to do that twice. Once was where I mistake, I uh, put too much reliance on some of the group members and they weren't necessarily comfortable with the material. We didn't get a good mark. But then with the second task I were assigned, we were able to learn from that and improve my mind. So I have the benefit of the past CLSA, the teams that are here, They'll obviously give pointers and notes towards how we can improve or at least maintain our high performance and then we can do things with that. Um, when I was at Western, I was an executive club member for Women in Leadership Club and I was focusing on events in that role and a time where I went out of my specific role to help another team was um, marketing and I was constantly working with them to make sure that things were delivered to the club members effectively. And so, yeah, that's the time that I went outside of my dedicated role. All right, and my last question is, um, what do you think sets you apart from the other applicants or each other for this position? Okay, I think Michael's great, um, but I think that something that sets me apart from Michael is my communication skills and my interpersonal skills. I know a lot of you in here, and I'd like to continue to get to know you all, but I think that is something that does set me apart from Michael. So this is way too formal of a setting for me to show that uh, I'm communicating in like a casual way, but pretty much it's intercommunication skills. It's a passive role because it's within the members of the association, not with the students outside of it. So I think positive communication is a benefit, but not necessarily a benefit, but it is something that happens. Otherwise, I just have familiarity with all aspects of the CLSA, or at least I try to be familiar with all aspects. All right, thank you. Next, we'll move on to the questions for the alumni directors. Um, Lena, why do you think you would be a good fit for this position? I would be a great fit for this position because of uh, my, uh, my past experience of working at law firms, connecting with like lawyers and um, other paralegals, and just uh, making connections over, uh, over the law community. And I would be a great fit for this position because with my connections that I have, I can help these alums find, back, find jobs back home in either you're in Alberta or your over like the West Coast, I can I would have those connections and those like I know where to like I know who to ask and where to go for for uh, alumni that need jobs and how to get through the MCA and um, yeah, just like my past experience. I think that'd be a good fit for, for this role because I am passionate about what I do. I always give my hundred percent commitment to um, commitment to whatever I do. I'm a very positive person, I'm very social. I like to meet new people and learn the, learn the stories as well. Yeah. Okay, um, Carmen Joe, can you walk us through a successful event you've organized in the past? Um, what were the key factors that contributed to its success? Um, back when I was in high school, I was part of my uh, school's grad council, right? And we had to organize like, you know, the boat cruise tour. So we had to like call, call the company and we had to um, determine the price of the tickets and then we had to, um, you know, organize ticket sales as well and we had like, you know, I'm sorry. That's okay. So we had to like schedule which days we were supposed to sell, uh, sell tickets and we had to organize like who would be selling those tickets as well. And we also had to, you know, organize like, you know, um, getting out for this time and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay, um, I would say the biggest event I've ever hosted was I was, I just turned 18, I started a new position and I was responsible for a law student that just uh, that just finished his art degree, and the principal lawyer put me in charge of doing his bar call. So his bar call is when you get, when you finish your articles, you get called to the bar, and the lawyer wanted to do him something nice. So he left me in charge to, uh, to make sure this was a memorable bar call for this specific student. 
So the bar call consisted of me booking with the courthouse, uh, the courtroom, and booking with the judge that is available for that bar call and also for the after party of that bar call. Um, like the lawyer said, yeah, there's no budget, so just make it nice and elegant. So I went out of my way to make sure we got a really nice venue, the catering was good, the decoration, even like um, for the students' uh, bar call uh, gifts. So I was in charge of that and it was a really great outcome. I had to invite like all these top lawyers, all these judges, and uh, it was a really well, well very, very good. Perfect. That's great. Um, Lena, what are your best qualities in maintaining a positive relationship with an alumni network? Um, we can come back to you, of course. Armin Jo. Hey, can you repeat the question, please? What are your best qualities in maintaining a positive relationship with an alumni network? Uh, there is communication, because we need to have like, good communication in order to have like, a positive relationship. I have, I, I say, um, I did email advocacy as well to show professionalism. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, uh, for I can't recall the name of the fellow TLK member that she was doing these live streams and she's always connecting with uh, these fellow alums. I would say I would like to keep that legacy going and helping and keeping that relationship going with other alums. That's amazing. That's Avni. She killed her with speaker series this time. It was nice. Um, last question is what what do you think sets you apart from each other in this position? Perfect. Next, we'll move on to the questions for competitions. All right. So, Aiden, uh, why do you think you'd be a good fit for the role? Yeah. So, I think with competitions, the big thing is just having attention to detail, making sure you can foresee any issues, and good planning. Uh, in terms of those kind of things, I think my experience and just uh, my ability to foresee some of those problems and have backup plans and uh, figure out what would happen if uh, things went wrong and kind of have plans for that is uh, a good reason I'd be good for this. Do you have any experience in running or competing in competitions, or even anything that's extracurricular? Yeah, so growing up, I played a lot of sports, so I played hockey, and I was a part of a lot of tournaments with that. And then as I got older, um, last year I was uh, working, I worked in the Ontario University for a couple years with their athletics department, uh, as I mentioned earlier. But then also with uh, Volleyball Canada last year with Nationals uh, in Edmonton and Calgary, I helped uh, set up the events and um, helped with the uh, breakdown of the competition. <laughs> Helped with the breakdown of the competitions as it went from round robin onwards. I was able to uh, troubleshoot if anything happened with teams such on that one time or um, delays that happened because of the nationals from people coming across the country. So I think just the experience from that uh, and the ability to learn how to foresee problems and fix problems on uh, tight times is, uh, yeah, something that's great. Sweet. And uh, can you speak on something unique that you'd bring to the role? Um, so, yeah, I think. Uh, like I saw this semester uh, as part of the arbitration thing that Bali did a really great job. Everything was really prompt with his communication and all that. So I think it's just going to be continuing kind of what he said and uh, keeping things seamless. And I think maybe just anything unique would be just my experience. And um, I don't know what Bali's experience was, but he did a really good job. So I think with me, it's just, yeah, if there is anything um, with my past experience and knowing how competitions were set up like that and feedback, that I could maybe do some things to uh, the competitions. Yes, awesome, thank you. Um, now our last one will be for all round. Um, so Ian Zilli, why do you think you would be a good fit for this position? I think I'd be a good fit for this position because uh, in my previous employment as a political, I worked with three different article students who went through the MCA process, so I'm very familiar with what steps to take, how to go about it, and how to communicate it to people if you want questions about it as well. Um, so the CLSA started a new event with the CBC this semester, or last semester, to promote career-ready skills um, for Canadian students. 
how do you plan on getting up to date with that and then possibly expanding that moving forward? So as I previously mentioned in my past appointment, I've worked with a lot of lawyers who typically only hire students as part of a piece of the LTD as they taught them. So I believe that I'd be able to not only network with previous um, bond students who've gone through the process, but also the previous lawyers that I've worked with um, in order to ask some questions or see if they would even be available to speak at this event as well. And just because my network is still up to date, I still communicate with these previous article students who went through the process. Any questions or communication, I can still go about with them as well. Thank you. Um, and then the last one is just what is something unique that you can bring to your role? I think kind of just tying it all together, again, my network of, and previous experience with the NCAs would be something that is kind of unique because I feel like it is such a common contest to a lot of Canadians, and it is a, such a complex um, process that just having a good grasp on how it actually works is unique and helpful to the world. Thank you. Um, well, thank you to all applicants. This is not the last question. We do have one more general one, but um, the CLSA, of course, all meetings are mandatory for members as well as events. Um, so just uh, an answer, a quick answer, but does this, is this gonna be an issue for you at all, um, attending events and meetings? That would not be an issue for Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.